account, from my Windows Live account, from my Facebook account, my social feeds. As people change their pictures, their pictures will change here as they rotate through. So these are my actual friends. On your phone, it'll be your actual friends rotating through. The text tile, it's just a little bubble right now. As I receive text messages, it'll turn into an emoticon. The more text messages I get, the more animated the emoticon gets. He gets happy, he gets really excited. So it's kind of a fun thing to do as well. I'll get counts next to the bubble. I'll get message counts next to the envelope in Outlook. I've got my calendar here. It tells me what my next appointment is, so I don't even have to go into the calendar to see what's going on. I've got this V tile here. Now this is my contact card where I can get into different things like my own social networking feeds and post up things such as when you go onto Facebook and say, where it says, what are you doing? Or what's, what's up or whatever you can type in, I'm going shopping or something. I can do that stuff right there with a touch. I've got Internet Explorer type uh, added up here. I can add any application to this start menu. I can add artists, I can add playlists for my, for my music. I can add web pages. I can add almost anything on my phone to this start menu. And if the application is built with a live tile, I can see more information without having to go into the application. Maybe a weather application that shows me at a glance what the weather's like back in Seattle. For that one, it can actually doesn't even have to be live. It just has to be a rain cloud with rain normally because it's always raining in Seattle. But I can see what's going on without even going in and seeing what, you know, and launching the application because that application will be feeding information out to these live tiles constantly. I've got my pictures tile here. That's an actual picture on my phone, not a generic picture coming from the ROM. I've got my games tile here. And you notice I've got a little avatar peeking in here. I'll tell you what that means here in a little bit when he's peeking in there. I've got my music and videos tile with an artist picture on it. That picture of the artist is the last piece of music or last artist I was listening to. That will dynamically update as I listen to different music it will feed down from the web, and I will get different pictures of different artists, whatever one I was listening to last. And at the bottom, I've got my friend Katie, who I want to keep in contact with. Maybe that's my wife, maybe somebody else, a close friend that I'm always in contact with. One touch away. I can customize the start screen. I can simply press and hold. If I hit that little broken heart, it removes that icon or that tile from the start menu. I can move it anywhere I want. The other icon sort of pivot out of the way. I can drop Katie up in there and lock it in. So I can move these tiles anywhere I want on the phone. I can delete, I can add, I can change the color to a different color. If I'm not a blue kind of guy, maybe I'm a yellow guy or an orange guy. And stop. As a front row doing your job, we had a back row flag me on that one. Um, but I can change the colors if I want to. I can make it fit me. I can make this phone uniquely mine. Now, I talked about integration with the operating system and between components of it. So let's see how some of that works, as well as I'm going to show you some of the things that I really like about uh, some of the functionality here. Now, I'm going to touch on this. This is only a snapshot, the tip of the iceberg of what this phone can do that I'm showing you today. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. So because you don't see it happen, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I'm not telling you about it yet. Now, here's my agenda view on my calendar. I'd like to point out I've got two different colored items here. I've got blue agenda items and red agenda items on my calendar. What that is, is that's a separation of two calendars I have. The blue items are coming down from my work outlook. The red items are coming down from my Windows Live calendar. So I've got my personal calendar that I use for my family and my wife. I put kids' soccer games on there, the kids' karate lessons. I can see what's going on there. And uh, because they're separated by color, they stand out very easily on the menu, on the on the views. So I can see what's what at a glance. Don't have to worry about it. So I can have more calendars as well. If I had a Gmail account or a Yahoo account, I can easily add those in here. I can customize and say I want them to be green or yellow or orange very quickly, very easily in a tab or two. We have an agenda view. If you like to view your calendar that way, it actually looks like an agenda view. I can drop out to my month view and at a glance kind of see how busy my month is and how busy separate days are. I can just drop right back into my day view. Now, every night we have a team meeting where we kind of debrief on the day's activities here at the show. We hold this at the uh, Microsoft, Microsoft uh, offices here in Barcelona. So when I go into this appointment, it looks like any other standard appointment, except I've got this orange text up there. But well, what that orange text represents is the fact that the operating
operating system recognize that as an address, as something unique. The operating system will recognize phone numbers, and it will recognize addresses, so it can action on those with a single touch. If that was a phone number, one touch dials it. This is an address. I did nothing special to make this address happen, except typing it into the location line in my browser. I didn't paste a special link, no magic, no special smoke and mirrors. I just typed the darn address in there and saved the appointment. The operating system recognized it as an address here in Barcelona. I can tap that address, and what it does is it obviously it, it, it knows that you must want to know where that address is and see it on a map. So it loads up my maps. So I'm going to pinch out a little bit and get a little further out. And as it loads up these maps here, I'm going to start zooming in. As I start zooming in, I want, to know, I want you to notice a few things. I want you to notice how smooth the zoom is, how the toggles actually fade into each other versus kind of just going splat, 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 splat as it repaints tiles in, in here for a map. They fade in, they blend. And as I get closer in, the application is, is intelligent enough to know that as I get closer, maybe I want more relevant information than what I'm after. So as I tap down here on the screen, I can multi touch zoom it to. I can get a little closer. I can get a little closer in. As I get a little closer, it knows that you know, maybe you don't want just a street level view. Maybe you want to have an aerial view too to see what the buildings look like there. So I can zoom a little bit closer in. I can pan around and check out what's going on with the maps. So as I zoom back out, that's going to fade away and give me the street level view so I can get around a lot easier. So the phone intelligently looks at what I'm doing and anticipates what my needs are. Now every Windows phone has a back button. So in order to get back, if I want to check out the time for this appointment, I can just go back. I don't have to go back to the home screen and then back into the calendar items to do it. One touch takes me back because I have a back button. Another tap can take me right to my calendar so I can see what free time I have after the meeting before we go out and find some fun on the town. All right, I hit the start button. Every phone has a start button too. I got a back button, I got a start button. We also have a search button. So the phone has search integrated into every aspect of it. I'm only gonna show you one, one little piece of the search engine right now. As I hit that search button, I'm transferred into the Bing search client here. Sometimes my connectivity goes down in this room. There it is. So I have the Bing search client here. So that comes up, and I can do a search on whatever I want. So this is basically to be considered what you would have as your standard web search. So maybe I want to search for some pizza for tonight. I can type pizza. Make sure I have connectivity here. I lost that there. Let's try that again. some search results for pizza. Now, actually, that wasn't even pizza. That was P. <laughs> I'm sure I can type. Pizza. There we go. Now I got pizza. It helps to be able to spell. So what I have are some local results, obviously. The, the phone is the, being is intelligent enough to know that you're searching for pizza. You probably want a pizza place. You probably don't want to know about pizza necessarily. So it's going to be local results. The phone is location aware, so it knows where I'm at. I can go to a map like I saw before by tapping the map. Or, or I can access any of these locations, and they're sorted to me by distance from my, my relative location right now. I can go into one of the, one tap, one touch directions, one touch to call the, to call the location. I can get reviews on the restaurant. If anybody liked this place, they could review it, and I could read the reviews. I can search for businesses nearby. And here, this is all available to me, just like that. Normally, I would have to go out to a website and wait for website after website after website to load up on my browser to find out what's going on and see if this is the information I really want. Here, it's just relevantly available to me. Now, actually, where is it? Nearby. So if I can look, look at nearby here, I might find a club that I want to go to tonight after dinner that's close by that I can walk to and not have to pay for a cab, for instance. Now, if I go back, I can see what's going on news-wise. I can see what's going on or read about things on the web uh, regarding pizza. So maybe I want to go to Wikipedia here and check out information on types of pizza, for instance. So when I tap that link, it's going to open up Internet Explorer browser and 